I got a package! And I also got something in the mail. But I'm so excited to see what it is. Who am I kidding? It's already open. But I'm pretty excited because drunk carpenters getting into the laser business. Hopefully not like that. But honestly, I don't know who's trusting me with a laser. But I went and picked up a 10 watt laser. This is the longer Ray 5. 10W. As far as lasers go, I have no idea what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this stuff out. We're gonna set it up and we're gonna laser some things. So opening this thing up, I'm actually pretty impressed right away. One thing that definitely caught my eye about this laser is that it's got a touchscreen monitor up front. Not too many other brands have that and I think that's really awesome. It also comes with these cool shades along with some fun arts and craft things that we can test out with our laser right away. Got of course the laser bracket that it sits on, which this is what I see is I think really nice quality. Of course, all the side brackets. So putting this thing together is super simple. Everything is clearly marked. All the screws even come in different packages. So you know which step to use them on. In total, this thing took me about 15, 20 minutes to put together. It was really easy. Even a dummy like me can put it together. Ah, shit. Put this on upside down. Well, almost. You guys won't have a problem. All right, so I made a really cool design, or at least I think it's kind of cool. And uh, we got these little pieces of plywood that came with the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and laser engrave on this. Kind of test it out. I got the machine running at 50% power and uh, 6,000 speed. I went ahead online and here are some different speeds and power increments for different materials. Kind of seems like it's gonna be something that you're gonna have to play around with a little bit to really dial it in and figure out kind of what you're looking for. But with being able to pick from zero to 100 for power and your speed increments and passes. There's a crazy amount of different uh, variations that you can do with this machine. But I'm gonna test it out with just this. So let's start it up. Let's do this. So first attempt with the laser, I am pretty happy. I mean, this is sick. I think I need to mess around with light burn a little bit. That's the program that you use with these lasers. Uh, just messing around with it just for a little bit. It looks like there's so much different stuff you can do with it. The saw blade on this came out fantastic, but the D and the C almost looks like it was lasered twice. But since the saw blade looks like it's perfect, I'm sure it's something I just did on light burn. But just looking at light burn a little bit, it's a great, fantastic tool. There's so many cool different things that you can do on it. I mean, I'm just beginning and it's blowing my mind. I can already tell I can do so much fun stuff with this. I'd like to say that it's almost comparable to one of those Cricut machines. Honestly, Lightburn, the programming is so much better than Cricut and lasers are so much cooler. Lasers. Laser! I mean, you can do a lot more than this than you can with a Cricut. So if you're a fun hobbyist, I'd almost lean towards this than the Cricut. But one tiny issue that I did have when I burnt this thing out, kind of started to smell like a bonfire in here, which this thing does warn you about. It says that you have to be in a well-ventilated area. It does create some smoke. I mean, it's burning wood. I should have realized that. So we're going to do a couple more tests with this thing, but for now on, all our tests will be in the garage where uh, I'm not going to smoke myself out in the shop. Okay, so it is darker in here, but it is more ventilated, which is what we need because we're going to start cutting. Pretty much the main reason I got this laser is that I could do some cutouts with it. This here is a charcuterie board handle that I cut out myself. Cutting it out yourself and sanding it and doing all that stuff takes a lot of time. So if I can just type this into the laser and can cut it out perfectly, I mean, that's gonna be awesome. So the really cool thing about Lightburn is you can do some material testing. You're gonna be able to put it in a range of the laser power to how fast it's moving and actually a couple more settings. So we're gonna do that here, cutting this out. I'm doing a quarter inch plywood and I heard that's kind of tough for a 10 watt laser. So we'll see how the longer does. But for these templates, I'm gonna need at least a quarter inch. So being able to cut through this is pretty critical for me. So I've been messing around with this laser a lot. I've been trying to find the best way to cut out quarter inch plywood. And although Lightburn has all these tests that you can do, figure out what you want for cutting and filling material, I did find out that using bigger material, this is not the best way to try and figure that out. Honestly, these squares are just too small. Uh, with larger materials, you do need to do multiple passes with the laser. And these squares are just too small, it burns it. That's why it kind of looks the way it is, or so I thought. I ended up hooking up this air assist, which is just a really small compressor. Pumps air through a hose to the tip of your laser. It's a super sweet attachment and it helps this thing cut a lot better. I went from getting burnt material like this down to something like this. 
right away that air assist. If you're looking at picking up one of these lasers, you definitely want that air assist. It helps it with such a cleaner cut. It disperses that smoke. But these little squares still aren't the best way to figure it out when you're looking at thicker material. I went ahead and upped the size of the squares. These are about one inch squares. And with that air assist, it just cut right through it like butter. This bigger one, I think I did five passes and this one was four. And that was 100% power at I think 350 speed. So yeah, I wonder if it cuts through quarter inch plywood. Yes, it absolutely does. That is awesome because I am no longer cutting these out by hand. I hope that didn't break. I still kind of want that. But using that test method for thinner material, I'd say that's a great way to test it out and figure out exactly what you want and to dial in your laser. And then absolutely for engraving, filling in materials, definitely use that. So I know it can cut, but can it make really precise images? I just found this random one online. I thought it looked kind of cool. And it's got some really precise details in it. And there's a lot of shading too. I'm not really sure how the machine's gonna work with that. The larger one I did is about two and a half inches, and the smaller one is about an inch and a quarter. And even the really small one came out great, the detail's amazing, and I think it did a really cool job with the shading, and it just looks really cool. I'm really happy with this machine. I'm starting to realize that the possibilities with this thing are pretty much endless. Sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. And with it being able to engrave on pretty much anything, you can look around and see all these amazing things this machine can make. I mean, you can have so much fun with this machine. I know I'm going to. So I'm gonna grab a lot more material and I'm really gonna put this thing to the test. And let me know what you think. What's something that you want engraved? Cause I betcha this thing could probably do it.